Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time this podcast is finding you at. This is my wake up podcast. You are not tired. You're just uninspired. And I am here to help you. I am the creator and founder of Life Minded and Free. I am focused on helping women who are unfulfilled live above mediocrity and create a life of their wildest dreams because you can have financial and time freedom. You can have a good marriage. You can have a good relationship with your kids. You can have a good faith, a good health. And I'm here to show you how not only I did it, but how I was able to teach thousands of other women to do the same thing. So welcome to the show. I hope you enjoy today's podcast. So one of the biggest mistakes or biggest hurdles that I see entrepreneurs making is that they spend all this time figuring out who am I, what is my brand, who am I hurting for, who am I targeting, who am I trying to influence, who am I adding value to, what are their pain points, what can I talk about that will relate to those pain points. And then we'll even go into, okay, I need to start doing this. So I need to start planning my content. And that's why a few of us just started a 30 day posting challenge, because, you know, that's what we, that's what we need to be consistent with is posting every single day for 30 days. So that's the next part is being consistent and saying, okay, I'm going to do this every single day. But then I find, because I'm guilty of it, this is something that I personally found with myself is it's like. Well, how do you just like get in there? Like, yeah, you start posting, but it's like, how does, how do I get everyone to know like who I am and what I'm doing, especially if you're about to make a change in something that I found to be really great. And I've seen other people do it and I feel super connected to it, but also I'm starting, I just was thinking about this yesterday is that once you're like, this is who I am and this is what I want, you need to really introduce yourself to the world. And you need to either go live, uh, that would be best to like go live, do a reel where you're talking. You know, if you can't do that, pre record a video. If you can't do that, make a post. Anything is better than nothing. But you need to tell people, like, this is what you can expect by following me. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is what I'll be talking about. If you don't like it, then you're probably going to want to unfollow me because this is who I'm talking to. And this is why I'm talking to them. And this is why I'm passionate. And this is what I've achieved. And this is what I've figured out. And this is what I'm going to be doing moving forward. Not only are you clearing the air of communication and showing people, you know, weeding people out by being super specific. But now what you're doing is you're really like holding yourself accountable to your people because you went out there and said, Hey, this is what I'm going to be doing. So if you stop doing it, now you're not doing something you said you're going to do. Now you're letting people down. Now you're letting yourself down. And so when you really want something to happen, you need to out yourself to as many people as possible and tell them what you're going to do. Um, because it, it holds you accountable. Now, be careful. Florence Scovel Shin talks about if you're talking to so many people about what you're going to do, you need to be careful because they're probably not going to think that you can do it. They're probably not going to be able to like, oh, yeah, you go get it. Oh, you're going to do that. Like, you're going to be a millionaire in a year. Sweet. You're going to invent something cool. You're going to start your own coaching business and quit your job fantastic. Like nobody's going to say that. Nobody's going to do that. People are just going to beat you down and they're going to make you feel like you're stupid. You're crazy. That's never going to happen. What are you doing? Put your head down, get back in line because that's how it is. And they don't mean any harm by it. My husband does this to me all the time. In fact, he just did it to me last night where I spent a good part, part of my day yesterday creating a daily reflections sheet because I want to be able to track myself 
over time. I want to be able to see like how consistent I actually am with things because I know if I could just be more consistent and I could just do the things that I know I need to do and I could force myself to do them, I know that I'm going to be way more successful in my day. I know that my success in my business is going to come. My success in my mental health is going to come. My success in my marriage is going to come. And I'm obsessed with elevating all five areas of my life from faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances, because the higher you elevate all of those, the, the better your life becomes, as long as you are elevating faith above them all and walking in path with God and who he created you to be and what he created you to do. Because if you're doing that, then you're super fulfilled. You're super happy. Life is great. Now it's not perfect, but life is better than it was. And so if you start speaking that and you're different and you have higher goals, the people around you aren't going to understand. And so my husband said, you spend way too much time on stuff like that. And, and I knew what he meant. I knew that he didn't mean you're a loser. You're never going to be successful. You're crazy. Because I just realized by reading the book driven that we talked about a few podcasts ago, um, in that book, he talks about people having this driven gene versus people who don't, that you can be tested for. You can see it on your DNA. It's different. You are wired differently. And those are the people that go out and do the big, crazy, amazing things. Those are your Steve Jobs, your Bill Gates, your every single person out there that's creating this massive organization, company, those people are all driven people where they want more, they want to do more. And that's what goes out and changes the world. So because the majority of people aren't driven, don't let the majority tell you something and start to believe it's true. Just because there's more people on one side doesn't mean they're on the right side. And that's something that I learned a few years ago when I quit my corporate job and started working for myself and said, I'm going to do this. That's when I really realized that the majority of people are okay with being mediocre. They're okay with living just a mediocre average life. And if that's you and you're listening to this thinking like, I think that this is me, like I'm, I'm okay with being mediocre. If you are okay with being mediocre, then that's great. And I'm happy for you because the goal is for you to be happy and fulfilled. So if you feel happy and fulfilled living a mediocre life, whether that's my definition or yours, if you feel like that, then that's great because that's the goal. And if you're walking with God and what you're doing is simple and you're simple living, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that are living mediocre lives and they're miserable and they hate their job and they hate their marriage and they hate being around their kids and you hate the way you look in the mirror and you don't have a strong faith. You don't know who God is. You don't feel like you hear from him on a daily basis. You hate your friendships. They're either toxic. People are flaky. You don't have good friends or you don't have any friends that you've been able to keep. It really is all of these different things. If you're broke and you can't pay your bills and you're stressed out and you just want a vacation, but you can't afford it and your job won't give you time off and you're miserable about it. That is the person that I want to inspire is the person who isn't okay with just being mediocre they want something more or they're sitting in negative. Um, so you have like mediocre, which is kind of your neutral. And then you can be in the negative or you can be in the positive. So some of these people sit in the negative and they're also okay with that too, even though all they do is constantly complain about living in this negative lifestyle, they choose every single day to keep it. And your life is all different choices that you've made all added up to equal your total life. That if your life is spinning out of control right now and you're in trouble or you've made mistakes or you have regrets and there's ways that you've been behaving, there's things that you've been doing, there's choices you've been making that aren't good, that you don't like, to change your life around, you just start making good decision after good decision, the right decision, not what feels good. What is good? What is true? What is right? What God would give you advice to do? And sometimes when I have questions and I don't know what to do and I'm thinking, I will literally stop and think. Remember the bracelets, the WWJD? I will literally be like, pretend like God is here and he's a friend and I'm asking him for his 
feedback and what his advice would be. And I'd be like, okay, what would God say to do? Okay, God, what, do, what should I do? What's your advice? And I always hear the advice that I need to, which is the right answer. Now, the right answer, the good answer isn't going to feel good. It's probably going to suck and it's probably going to feel worse than the, than the other one because that's just how it goes. And so if you want to change your life around, just start doing the right thing after the right thing, after the right thing, after the right thing, and it'll string together and eventually good things will start to happen. It's going to take a long time, maybe, maybe it happens right away, but it will start to happen over time. The same with making bad choices. You make one bad choice after another, after another, after another, you find yourself dug into a hole where now you're thinking, oh my gosh, what is going on? Well, you are making bad choices. Now you're upset because of how you physically look. You made bad choices. I made bad choices. And it's okay to know that, guess what? There's a way to change it. And it's super simple. You just start making good choices. Like April, shout out to April, going to the gym for two days in a row now. And <laughs> too much Nutella. <laughs> I love Nutella. Nutella is just so good. I love it. <laughs> Uh, but you can change it around. We're all capable of doing it. That's the best decision ever is that it's not like only some people are going to be able to do this. You have a 100% chance of turning your life around if you start making good decisions. But don't let people negatively influence you or pull you down or make you think you're crazy like my husband did. Bless his heart. He didn't mean it. But by saying things like that for a second, I kind of stopped. And what I did is I looked at it and I was like, yeah, why do I want to track my behavior over time? Like, how strange, like, why am I obsessed with tracking my own behavior? Because I told him, I was like, I'm going to put all of this stuff on this list and I'm going to put a copy of this in the comment section, whether you're watching this on YouTube or on the podcast so that you can um, have it and you can see it. But for you guys on here, I'm going to, pull it up in screen share so that you can see. But my goal is that I want to be able to look at how many days so I'm going to track a week at a time. And I'm going to look at at the end of every week, how many times or how often did I do this one thing? So I have like, what time did I wake up? I want to know for real, like what time am I waking up? Um, this isn't a sheet to be perfect. This isn't a sheet to look how great I am or how hard I am on myself. The purpose of the sheet is not to be perfect. The purpose of the sheet is to remind me of the things that I need to do on a daily basis to help me achieve goals in my life that I have set with my five Fs that I listed earlier, my faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances. And if I can remember to do these things and be consistent and diligent enough to do them, I will have a more successful business. I will have a more successful relationship with God. I will have a better, closer relationship with my husband. I will be impacting more people. I will feel better mentally. And so I want to know, like, did I make my bed that day when I woke up? Did I spend time in the morning with God? Did I stretch? Did I eat breakfast? Did I make my greens drink? And did I have lunch? How much water did I drink? What was my overall mindset? How is mine and John's relationship today? Was I overwhelmed and anxious? Did I work out? Did I work on my business? Did I post on the sites I'm supposed to? Um, did I do any coaching calls? Did I make dinner, wash my face, brush my teeth, floss my teeth, listen to a book, listen to a thermit, um, sermon, a Thurman, <laughs> a Thurman. <laughs> and what kind of impacts did I make that week on people? And what kind of thoughts and ideas do I have? And I want to track this over time so that I can see this. Now, if you're someone who is driven and you want to be as successful as you can, you probably know every single thing right now that you need to start and stop doing in order to achieve that. 
So we spend so much time figuring it out and getting to know it where we'll purchase courses and we'll spend time on social media, reading people's stuff and we'll subscribe to blogs and we'll watch master classes and we'll do all the things to learn it. And we stay in learning mode because we don't actually ever get into doing mode because we can't ever make it more than three, maybe four days being consistent with something. The average person can do something for three days, literally three days. You're like, I want to start making my bed in the morning. You're going to last for three days. And if you're like me, you might last one day. Actually today, I didn't even do it this morning. And I'm like mad at myself because when I was going to do it, right when I got out of bed in the morning, Skylar was sleeping with me. And so I was like, okay, I will just make it when she wakes up. And I, I am like embarrassed to admit this. But I saw my bed and I was like, it, it would take me honestly, probably not even a full one minute to make my bed. Like my bed is pretty much made how the blankets and pillows stay. Like I just have to like straighten it out. And so I looked at my bed and thought it's not made. I should make it real quick. No, because we'll probably climb back in bed after school. I literally thought that in my head and was like, okay, the reason why I wanted to make my bed is so I'm like, the bed is made. Like, we're not going to bed. We're going to be productive. So the, the fact that I didn't do it because I wanted to be unproductive was like a red flag in my head. Like, okay, this, this isn't okay. <laughs> like, you know, like this is how I'm, this is my issue with being consistent. And so now I'm going to make my, I'm going to make my bed and I'm going to be able to cross it off. Like, yes, I made my bed today and I did that. So it might be crazy to you if you're not this driven type of person, but if you are a driven type of person, which most of us are who listen to this, then it does matter to you because if you can just do the things that you know to do, you're going to have the results that you know you can get. That's the only thing that's standing in the way of you actually being super successful in your life, however success is defined to you. However you want to define it, you can have that. But you just have to start doing the things you know you need to do. And so maybe you need to make a tracker like mine. Maybe you need to put alarms in your phone. Maybe you need to put post-it notes all over your house or get a super strict routine. I'm sure there's an app for that that helps you stay on task and alarms that go off when you're supposed to do the next thing and you line up your whole routine in there. If there's not, someone please make one. (laughs) <laughs> so that I can use it because that would be awesome. But whatever you need to do to get yourself to do things. Now, if you feel like, yeah, I do, I do the things that I need to do. I feel like I don't maybe do them right away, but they eventually get done in the time frame that I'm happy with. Then I challenge you to challenge yourself and to maybe put some things on your list that make you uncomfortable things on your list that you don't want to put on your list because then it means you have to do it. So I challenge you to do that. And if it's whatever your soul feels like you need to start doing, researching, learning, actually getting into action, whatever that is inside of you where you're like, I've totally been putting this off for so long and I need to actually do this. Those are the things that are going to make the biggest difference in your life, whether it's a Bible study you want to start going to, a church you want to find, the gym you want to go buy the membership at, the marriage class or marriage counseling you want to sign up for, the friend group you want to get reconnected back to or that friend you want to reach out to. Whatever the feeling is in your gut, in your soul, telling you like, do this, reach out to this person, make the call, do the thing, go live, make the post. It's in your soul, pushing you to do it for a reason. There's a lot of things in your brain, but you don't act on them. When they're in your soul, your soul is like pushing you to act on it. And your brain is like, uh, hold on a second. Uh, hold on, hold on. We're not ready. Hold on. And so it's a difference from being in your soul versus in your brain. Your brain is just going crazy with like, we should do this. We should do this. We should do this. But your body isn't doing it because your body isn't ready for it. So 
listen to yourself. And that's why distractions, can you guys hear me? Okay. Said my internet's unstable. Okay. So distractions are so bad because our life is so busy and there's so much to life and there's so much to do. And there's so much happening around us all the time. And now that we have our phones in our hand and we have social media, it's like any second of our day that's spent left by ourselves, we fill it with social media or the radio or being on the phone or watching TV. I mean, I even find myself stopping at stoplights and like grabbing my phone, like stop at the stoplight, grab my phone, check my phone real quick, light turns green, I go. Like, I can't even spend two minutes at a red light by myself without being like, let me on my phone. Or you get in the car and you immediately turn on the radio or you immediately turn on a podcast or you immediately turn on a sermon. And those things are important. And I try to do them every single day, but they're not more important than you spending time by yourself with God. Because if you're listening to a sermon, yes, you're devoting a section of your day to learning about God, to thinking about God, but are you spending it with him? No, you're spending it with him and the pastor who's preaching the message. You're not just going to have coffee with Jesus in the morning. You're not having coffee with Jesus and pastor Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church. And so that's okay, but you ever have that friend or that person where you're like, hey, we really just got to get together one-on-one. Like one day, let's get together one-on-one or think about like if you, so a lot of people listen to this and you've never met me before and you've maybe are, you know, like you guys, some of you haven't even like ever met me in real life, but I feel like we've known each other forever, but some people like don't have never even talked to me live or, you know, seen me talk. And so what's crazy is think of this, think if you came to an event uh, I left a huge teaser on one of our last recordings saying that I announced something new and oh my gosh, and it's insane. And you guys wait. And then I never actually said what it was. So we're announcing that we're going to have the first ever, uh, retreat that's hosted by my company, like-minded and free. And it's going to be called a soul revival and it's going to be four days long It's going to be at a beautiful mansion with a pool and a hot tub and all the things that you could want. And it's going to be a women's empowerment retreat, helping women become fulfilled and happy and learn who they were created for God and how to really light their souls on fire. So whether you want to start a business and you just don't know how to do it or you want to quit your job, or you want to take your business and blow it up, or you just want to go because you want to become a better version of yourself. We're going to do things like writing love letters to ourselves, learning what our Enneagrams are, uh, learning all of our talents and what motivates us and what deflates us. And we're going to be together with about 30 women. Now it is invite only. So if you personally know me, you are invited. If I know you know you, I know who you are. Um, You are personally invited and it's going to be a deposit to hold your spot. The trip is going to be the first weekend in February from Thursday to Sunday. And the first day of the trip on Thursday is going to be a free day where you can come in as early as you want. You can show up at 9 a.m. that morning and it's just going to be a day to hang out in the pool. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to have some food and charcuterie boards and all kinds of delicious stuff. All your meals are going to be included while you're there. Uh, It's going to be the whole first day as a free day. We're going to do games and then we're going to dive in the next day right after breakfast and start on learning our worth learning how to be more successful in life, hearing from a lot of different speakers. And uh, it's just going to be absolutely incredible. If you don't personally know me, you can be invited by somebody else. Uh, So if you personally know me, so like I know you, Terry. So Terry, you decide to come. You can invite anyone that you know. And I will believe you that, you know, I will, you can vouch for them. Like, hey, they're good. We just don't want total strangers, people that were like, nobody even knows who they are. You know, obviously we're all going to be staying together. So it's important to know we're safe and everything like that. 
Um, but if you really so bad want to go, send me a message on Facebook and I'll get you some of the details. We don't have all of the details ironed out right now, but when you do decide you want to go, you'll be able to fill out a form and enter in all of your information. We're going to ask like dietary restrictions, anything else we need to know about your health. Um, do you know anyone coming so we can like room you guys together? Um, and then we're going to have you um, pay a deposit that can hold your spot. Um, Cause we think the 30 spots are going to fill up pretty quickly. So that's, what's coming up. And we can't wait for that. A few of us have already started planning some really big things. You're going to get some branded gifts and it's just going to be an awesome weekend. Unlike anything you've ever been a part of. I've only been a part of something like this one time. And I took really good notes while I was there of all the things that I would do different. Um, and I was actually one of the hosts of the first one. And so I wasn't, you know, just like criticizing someone else's event, <laughs> but I was like, what are things that we need to do different next time when we do this to make it even better? And so I'm doing that event and then I'm adding in all the things that we said we need to do to make it better. So it is going to be better. And I'm super excited about it. And why I think it's going to be better is because last time I did this, it was only a group of women who worked together. And now I'm doing this for any unfulfilled woman who wants a soul revival. And so it's going to be really cool because everyone's going to be connected through different ways and we're all going to be a part of something different. So whether you're trying to start your coaching business, you're trying to start any kind of business and just figure out like what you could even do and you need some brainstorming. Uh, to you want to get your network marketing business off the ground or you want to automate things. It's going to just be a great time for, you know, anything to do with that. Obviously I'm a business coach. So we're going to be doing a lot of things for women who are sick and tired of just living mediocre careers. And they want to step up above mediocrity and do something awesome, make an impact in some way. And that doesn't mean quit your job and walk out but it means starting something else. Maybe you want to start a nonprofit or you want to start some sort of movement or community or and you invented something and you want to start it or a book or a blog, whatever it is, it's going to be a good event for you. So I cannot wait more on that to come, but it's just very cool to see people that are driven, people who want more. It's cool to see the things that they care about. And so like, I care about this tracker and other people like my husband don't care about it. And they're like, okay, this is crazy. Like, it's crazy to think though, like how some of us actually care about things like this and some of us don't. Like some of us are like, wow, I've never even ever thought to track how many days in a month I work out or how many days I'm actually adding to this sheet, my health, because my health has been pretty bad lately. Um, a lot of like symptoms and things going on with me. Um, I have two different autoimmune diseases that I just took supplements for and kind of, that's all I ever did. And I think it's kind of catching up to me, um, and just not eating like I should. And so I know that by putting it on my sheet, reminding me to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and then also putting it on my sheet to drink my greens drink, which has like all of my greens and then all of my vitamins that I take. I, um, actually partnered with a company and we have vitamin bombs and we were, April and I were just talking about these yesterday where you just put all of your vitamins, they're all in tinctures in a little shot glass and you just shoot it. And so I do that with my greens drink and I have all of that stuff on my shop link on my Instagram um, you can click on my highlight shop and you can see all that on there if you want to purchase anything. But I love that because when I take those supplements and I drink that drink, I feel way better than if I don't. And so if I don't write it down, I don't remember to do it, then I won't be able to do it. Oh, Emmy jumping on the bed. That's so cute. Hi, Emmy. <laughs> oh, she waved like an adult, like she didn't do like the baby wave. Yeah. See, oh my gosh. She's the cutest. I love her. Isn't it crazy how much joy babies bring? Like seeing a baby, there's just so much joy. I was saying that to John after my sister just had her baby a couple weeks ago and being around her baby Scotty. And it's like, I just, 
the way you talk to babies and just are so gentle. It, like your whole, like everything about you, like softens and changes when there's a little baby that you get to talk to. Like you can feel their energy, like so much, just how sweet they are. And they just, I remember I could always be in like the worst mood ever and mad at the whole world. And then I just had my baby and I remember just like nursing and like kissing their heads and being like, I'm so glad that I have you. Like you don't make me crazy. <laughs> You're the only thing that I ever want to be around. I just love it. And it's so sad that they just grow up and then they're old and then they get cell phones and then they want nothing to do with you. <laughs> whatever it's how it goes right um but the soul revival is going to just be really great and we thought for a while for the name and we were kind of throwing some things around and then last night I was falling asleep and I was having a hard time falling asleep um I think because yesterday it was any day that is really like a good day where I feel accomplished and I like really did stuff. I have a hard time sleeping that night, mostly because I'm inspired. Like the slogan of these calls are, you're not tired. You're just uninspired. And so you literally like can't go to bed and you're not tired. Like I was thinking, I'm like, I can't believe. And even this morning, I'm like, I can't believe like I was a little tired, like waking up, but then I was like, fine. Once I realized like what I was doing, and I'm like, it's crazy because I haven't really been getting that much sleep lately, but I'm not tired at all. And so it's because I'm just, my soul is on fire right now. I feel really excited about what I'm creating, what I'm doing. And so I did that yesterday. I started that and I did this tracker and I was like, okay, tomorrow's day one. Like I am on top of it. And so I was laying there and I was trying to fall asleep and I couldn't. And I started thinking about, I was like, okay, what could I, <laughs> this is really when you know you're a driven person. I was like, okay, so since I can't sleep and I'm not going to let myself go on my phone, like I have to have my eyes closed. And since I'm not falling asleep, what could I do in my head right now that could be productive? Like, what could I think about that I need to do? And so then I was like, oh, I need a name for the retreat. And so I just started thinking and then I prayed and I was like, God, give me a name, give me a name of something that I will just love. And so I was like, okay, so elevate, um, uplift, step, step up, step in, step out, lift up. And I was like saying all the things like, what are other words for like lift? I'm like, okay, rise. Ooh, I'm like, we could do rise. I'm like, no, Rachel Hollis did rise something. So I'm like, I could do a rise. I'm like, no, my church has done events called a rise for women before. So I'm like, I could do rise up, rise out, rise and shine, wake up, get up, inspire, uplift. Like I kept just going through. And then I thought of the word soul. And I was like, yeah, because I was like, what do I want people to do while they're there? Like, what are they going to be doing? Like, really think about that. Like, what is my goal? I'm like, my goal is to like set souls on fire. So I'm like, I could do like, ooh, like fire, like fire up or um, <laughs> it's like going through all of them. And then I was literally like, ooh, soul, like, because I was also thinking for branding purposes and for marketing stuff and for it to be on stuff and to like see it and make the graphic and like all of that. And then I thought soul revival and I instantly was like, yes. And I grabbed my phone and I turned it off in airplane mode and I texted the girls that were planning the trip and I said soul revival. And then I put it right back on airplane mode because I was like, that's it. That's what we're calling it. Like, I just know it. It's a soul revival. It's everything I wanted. And so that's what we're doing. And so we're going to have shirts and we're going to make all kinds of stuff, water bottles and all of it. So I can't wait. And I want this to, so you, you, some of, you know, my big, huge goal is to sell out the MGM in Las Vegas and host like a two day conference like this. And so how cool that this is going to be like the first soul revival weekend. And then we're going to be able to do because 30 people and then we can maybe do like 40 people. Then we can maybe do like, we'll have to do like a hotel and people will have to get hotel rooms instead of like the mansion. We'll have to stop doing that. Or maybe we do like a, I already thought about, I'm like, maybe we do 
like the mansion trip, like once a year. And that's the big one. And you have to pay like the big bucks to go because we're like all going to be staying there together in this house. And then we start doing like other conferences, like soul revival weekend conferences. Um, and then it goes right into the MGM and we sell out and that's a wrap <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> I can't wait for that. I'm so excited for it. Um, so yeah, this will just be our first one and it's going to be great. I can't wait. I like can't even sleep because all I do is keep thinking about this is like, it's going to be so great. So now I have something to look forward to is I'm like, okay, I need to really like get in the best space I can possibly be in over the next few months into where this retreat happens in the beginning of February. And so I did a really, really, really good job from January through June being like super pumped up, consistent, working on myself. I, this has been the best year of my entire life, hands down the best year. And it just keeps getting better. And I know that it's tough because some people are like, this is the worst year of my entire life. And some people are in bad seasons. I can look and say that this has been the best year of my whole life, but there has been some really bad things that have happened. And I lost my uncle and it's been tough with COVID and it has been hard. There has been hard seasons. There has been hard times. I had to make hard decisions. I've been too hard on myself. You know, I had to give myself some grace, the opposite of that. And so it really is cool to be able to know, like I was so consistent for six months. So from January until June, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I, I got a journal at the beginning of January. It was just a blank notebook. And on the inside cover, I wrote down all of my goals really not goals, but things I wanted to start doing and, and some goals mixed in there too. Like I wanted to start the marriage ministry at my church. So I wrote that down. I wanted to, oh my gosh, now I can't think of them, of all the things, but then I wrote down, I want to delegate more. I want to step into God's calling. I want to feel happy with myself grow my social media knowledge, automate as much as I can in my business, focus on God and what's important to him, become a spiritual mentor, rekindle my relationship with my biological father, speak on my own stage. I want to run and start up the marriage ministry with John. I want to see a therapist all year long, work on my branding, make $500,000, and I want to find some sort of brick and mortar building to work in sometimes because I'm super creative when I'm not at home and I'm not distracted. And I would love to like rent a brick and mortar studio where I could go in and record some of my podcasts professionally. And I could also be in like a city like downtown Detroit where I live, like feeling inspired with the city and the creativeness and I would love to like dress up and go down there for a day a week or, you know, whatever. I would love that. And so it'll help me be more creative if I was able to do that. And so those are some of the things that I wrote down that I wanted to do. And then I just started doing them. I was like, okay, see a therapist all year round. I need a therapist. Let's find one and book out all my appointments. And so the first six months I did so much. I accomplished a ton. I started almost all of these things. I finished some of them. I had a business coach for six months straight from January to June. And that's really what made the biggest difference in my life. And that's why I fell in love with coaching people because I was feeling so down and horrible about myself as a network marketer. I was making six figures, but I fell into the trap of network marketing of scarcity of you need more, you need to be more, you need to have more, you need to become more, you just, what's the next rank? What's the next person? What's, and it was so hard for me because I was still hard on myself. I wasn't happy because my whole life I had just chased money. And I thought that if I made a lot of money, I would be happy and fulfilled. And then I made a lot of money and I got there and realized I was more unfulfilled and more unhappy than I'd ever been before. And so I was um, started my, I almost quit network marketing in December 
my husband and I had COVID and I was really thinking about, I was contemplating quitting so bad mid-December and I heard God tell me to focus on him more and working less and my business will grow. And that didn't make sense to me because, you know, how could that be? And so it was hard for me to really believe what God was telling me to do because it was like, didn't even make sense. And so I begged my husband to let me do that and to step away from working so much and providing for the household financially and just really make money for fun and do what I love and focus on my mental health for the entire year. I struggled with my mental health for years and years and years. Um, and I never really truly knew who I was or liked myself until about August of last year, from August to December, I had a really bad mental breakdown and I stopped caring so much what other people thought and stopped caring what other people wanted me to do and started thinking about what does Taryn want to do? Who is Taryn made to be? What are my passions? What are my excitement? And I really started focusing on that. And so I started to love myself and realize who I was. And then in January, I got a business coach who I was in a really bad place in my business mentally thinking I'm a loser. I suck. This isn't going to work. I'm a bad leader. Nobody likes me. I had all of these negative thought patterns and she showed me that I wasn't created to be a full-time network marketer. I was created to do so much more. And because I was forcing myself into that box due to fear of what people will think of me due to fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, and I was focused on what the world wanted me to do. And I was letting people in my business be my mentor instead of God be my mentor. I was so out of alignment with what God wanted me to do. And it felt so horrible that I was so down on myself thinking I'm a loser and all these negative things. And my coach was like, Taryn, open your eyes and listen to what you're saying with your ears. You were created to do this other business. You have the idea, you have the passions, you have the gifts. You've had so many people tell you that you should do this, that this is totally you, that they would pay you for it, that they would show up and you're still not doing it. Imagine if you just stepped into your calling with God to go out and inspire people, unfulfilled women to live above mediocrity and to create a life of freedom and happiness and joy by stepping into God's calling for them. Not only would I, Taryn, feel so much better because now I'm in alignment with who God created me to be, it's also going to be easier. It's going to be more fun. It's going to feel like less work. And the success is going to come easier because it's what I'm meant to do. So it will be easier. I will be successful faster and I will feel better because I'll feel successful because I'm doing what God wanted me to do in the first place. So don't let fear, don't let distractions, don't let people hold you back from spending time with God and what God wants you to do, because that's how my whole life changed is because I actually believe that COVID was a huge gift to me. COVID put me on my butt for two weeks. I couldn't look at my phone. I couldn't get out of bed. I, all I could do is just watch Netflix sometimes and just lay there. And it, John and I both had it together. And so we just would talk and we would sleep and we would kind of take care of each other. And because I eliminated distractions, I wasn't able to drown my sorrows and my mental health and work. I wasn't able to just push through the pain and who cares, let's just make more money and I'll be happier. I wasn't able to do any of those things. And I had to sit there by myself and unplug and God got me away from all those influences and got me with him and I could hear from him. And that's when I realized because I was in a fragile state mentally, I realized I can't do this anymore. I can't keep doing this. I'm going to go crazy. I will actually go into a psychiatric facility. And I remember texting my best friend, Veronica, who has been with me through so much. If she's one of those people, and I hope that you have a friend like this, or I hope that you find one one day, because it does take two people to be a good friend, by the way. We don't really talk about friendship a lot, but I think we should start talking about it a little bit more. 
because a lot of people say how lonely they are and say how they wish they had friends, but I can see that it's a two-way road and they don't really put themselves in the position to receive friendship. Um, and they're not really attracting people to them because they're not putting that out there that they even want someone else in their life. But, um, she's the type of person who you have just seen so many seasons of life with bad, ugly, terrible, terrible seasons, and you're still together and you both have done horrible things and you both have been awful friends, but you always come back together. And uh, I was texting her one day. She is two years sober, got out of a really abusive relationship. I actually want to interview her on my podcast. So stay tuned. Her name is Veronica and I'm going to interview her. She already said I could. Uh, her story is so powerful, how she was able to climb her way out of just a terrible situation. Um, and it's very powerful how she really started at nothing. She gained like a ton and everything she ever wanted. And then she slowly started losing it all and then spiraled into addiction and divorce and all kinds of stuff. And then she brought it all back again. Um, so in the comments of this that you're watching, I'll link her podcast when I make it, I'll put it in here. I'll remember to do that. Um, I'm going to write it down so that I can remember. Um, but I remember texting her and telling her, how do you know when you need to be admitted into a crazy hospital? And she was like, you don't need to be admitted. And I was like, I actually think that I'm going crazy. I don't think you understand. I really think that I need professional help. I'm in a really bad place. I need, I need a lot of help and I was in a horrible place. So just know if you are in a horrible place, you are highly underestimating the power of God. And if you have God in your life, which every single person does, whether you believe it or not, he is there with you. And you have this wild card in your pocket that wins the game every time. And you know, my daughter and I play Uno all the time. Usually when she gets home from school, we eat a snack and play Uno together. And she always saves her wild card for the last hand and always wins it. And I'm like, how smart is that, that she does that? And that's exactly like what God does. God is your wild card. There is nothing, 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 nothing that God can't do. And so if you just don't know what you're asking, you don't even know what God wants you to do, then try eliminating distractions and sitting in peace and quiet for 10, 15 minutes. Drive home from work with the radio off and talk to God out loud. Drive to your appointment. You know, turn the music off in your house. Or when your kids nap, don't grab your phone. Go sit in your living room and close your eyes and hear from God and just say, okay, God, what do you want me? What do you want to tell me? And then just be quiet and just think and just realize the thoughts that are coming in and out of your head and what you're thinking of. And God could be speaking to you through that. Something pops into your head. You're like, yep, I need to do it. And watch your life start to transform and watch it start to change by just doing that. It will. It'll change huge.